Hello everybody. So this is a um, kind of a brief overview of the uh, six degree of freedom motion platform that will support on top of it a, a 737 full scale flight simulator. So that's the footprint for the nose section. Actually over here is the nose section that I'm working on right now. Today I'm welding up some of the, the superstructure for the screen support system. So the uh, simulator is in a static operation right now. Everything is functional and flies great, except it's on the ground. It needs to be on the motion platform. So once I get uh, the nose section finished, all of this stuff is going to be transferred over to the, the motion platform here, and then it'll be uh, more like the real deal. As far as what the simulator will end up looking like when it's all finished and packaged on the nose section, uh, this is a picture of a similar simula simulator, 737-800, and that's exactly what uh, this system will look like. Okay, so um, the layout of this, uh, the width of the base here uh, is about 8 feet, and the depth is about 7 feet. That gives you an idea of the scale. Uh, these are real 737 seats, and they go on the sliders here and uh, with the rest of the equipment. As far as the motion platform goes, I'm using six Grove gearboxes. Now these are dual reduction. Uh, first stage is a helical reduction here, and uh, then there's a worm drive gear reduction to prevent the back uh, sliding of the gear system. So when the platform under full load is, uh, is sitting up there, the, uh, the system will not slide backwards. That's a safety feature. I'm using, of course, the Thanos uh, AMC, or pardon me, AMC AASD 15A controller uh, to drive the servo systems. I'm using um, a Chinese servo motor and controller. It's a 130ST. It's actually 2.6 uh, kilowatts, uh, about a little over twice as much power as I had before. The, the mass on the simulator uh, when it's up on the motion platform, including the platform that all this has to lift, is about uh, 1,800 pounds. Uh, that includes the pilot and uh, co-pilot or captain and first officer in 737 terms. Uh, great job on this controller, Thanos. Uh, here I've got the uh, force offline switch and, of course, the indicators. I have to repackage all of this emergency off switch and this would be the standby park switch. What I'm going to use in practice in the simulator is that uh, these switches will be actually in the cockpit and they'll be set up somewhat like this with a uh, the forced offline switch will bring it down to a park mode which it uh, currently is. The, um, the, the top here is about 32 inches and when it goes to midsection, it'll be about 34 inches high off of the ground. Okay, so uh, the other switch uh, goes to a relay that controls the contactors for the 240 volts that drive these uh, servo controllers. Uh, that's an emergency function to kill power totally in case things go haywire and the offline switch does not work. Now, those are the only two switches that I will have in the cockpit. There will also be an emergency cutoff switch on the ground here so that someone on the ground can also kill this thing. Uh, the levers are 6-inch levers. Uh, this is a massive gearbox system. The levers are an uh, inch and a uh, quarter steel and uh, with a weldment on the bottom there going up to these actuators, which are 30 inches in length and about 2 inches in diameter. Uh, the servo systems uh, sit in this big box under here, so I've got power coming from the main panel underground up to the uh, simulator um, uh, area here, and then it goes through a uh, AC filter for EMI protection and uh, also goes into the contactors and then on its way up to the servo controllers. The data lines come in through here and end up going into the uh, the Thanos controller. 
So that's the real brief um, orientation of this. In my case, I'm using the um, a micro switch setup here. I have two micro switches in parallel, so either one trips the uh, home position for initialization. Afterwards, it goes to the initial park position, which in my case is zero. So what I'm going to do now is turn on power, uh, activate the power, all the contactors activated, the uh, actuators now are at their park position, and then I can put it online, and then the platform will go to its mid position. Now I'm using the BFF uh, 6 Degree of Freedom Motion software from Ian in Scotland. Great job, Ian. And uh, I understand also Pedro's working on the PT, Fly PT Mover, and that'll be an interesting uh, motion software to test as well. You can get a little better idea of the servo controllers here in this box. So that's how it's all organized. These servo motors weigh about 25 pounds. Uh, they're about half as uh, much weight as the previous uh, AC three-phase motors I had. So this ends up being a nice setup. I did not have to do any EMI shielding on the data cable, or the motor cable rather. It seems to be working fine without any uh, electrical or EMI glitches, so, so far so good. Okay, I'm going to pause this now, and we're going to, the first thing we'll do is a uh, pushback uh, on the ramp here to show you what the motion platform does under that condition. Stand by. Okay, we're going to start a, uh, a pushback system or setup. Go ahead and start. This would be a typical sequence when you're uh, at a, uh, a terminal gate and you request a push back and start. So watch what the platform does here when the tug connects. Okay, so a little bit of push back as the tug connects. Brake is released, now it's gonna push back. I've got this set at filter factor four. A little bit of bumps as it goes along. Disconnect tug. Okay. So that would be a typical pushback, at least the way I have the uh, motion cues and sensitivity set up at this point. I'm going to pause again. The next test is going to be a taxi test to show you what the motion platform does for ground operations. So this is a quick view of the 737 uh, main instrument panel, throttle quadrant, and navigation, uh, radio, fire control systems. Uh, this is the overhead system, which will, of course be overhead, but it's not there yet. In any case, uh, Bruce is uh, going to be our captain today uh, flying while I try to do the video. So here goes. We're going to start off and uh, just do a taxi, a braking operation, and then we'll taxi at 15 and then 30 knots, and then we'll do a, a full stop. So go ahead, Bruce. It's a little hard to see in the video, but basically we've got kind of an up-down heaving action. Go ahead and put on full brakes, Bruce. Okay, that's a full stop. Go ahead, continue taxiing. And get up to about 30 knots. Now each, uh, each seat in the simulator will have an uh, audio transducer that will provide a little bit of shock 
lateral shock vibration to the seat. Uh, that will be synchronized with this kind of movement. And uh, hopefully the cumulative effect will uh, give a nice uh, immersion experience. Okay, anyway, that's kind of what it does in taxiing. Go ahead and uh, make a hard right taxi. Hard right? Yeah. A little bit of yaw there, really hard to detect in the video. Okay, we'll pause. Next thing will be uh, uh, getting on the runway, doing a takeoff. So we're uh, holding short of the runway, and uh, Bruce is going to uh, get in position and take off. It added a little power. I think this might be a good angle to shoot this from. Let me see if I can get the screen in here also. Yeah, that might be nice. Okay, he's lining up with the runway. He's gonna do a full power takeoff. A little bit of taxi bumps there. Cleared for takeoff. So we notice the, uh, the bumps are increasing in frequency. The rotation's about 140 knots. rotating. Landing gear going up. And we're going to uh, depart and then do a cross left crosswind, then a downwind, maybe do some turns along the way and then uh, base and final to landing. Give me a deliberate turn when you make the turn. So right turn, 30 degree bank. Very good. Right turn, 30 degree bank. Right turn. And I've got the washout set for a couple seconds. That seems to feel pretty good when you're sitting in the seat there. I strap myself into this occasionally and see what the sense is like. This is the correction rolling out. Okay, give me an abrupt climb. About climb. Okay, level out. Now you get a sense for what it's doing there. Let's do a, sh a short descent, level out. Do what? Short descent, then level out. Prominent left turn downwind. Left turn downwind. Left turn. Okay. So we had a little right turn there, now we're going left. And notice that it holds the bank a little longer when he goes from a right turn immediately into a left turn. The washout 
uh, takes a little time to kick in. Okay, so I'm going to let him get set up for landing, then we'll make the last segment the landing. Go ahead and turn final. Is it left turn to final? So there's no autopilot in this, he's just hand flying this uh, at this point. And there is also no real-time weather. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is uh, just the straight P3D, no weather. Okay, he's rolling out. Yeah. And I'm going to actually put in some uh, some turbulence. So stand by. <laughs> 